as you're talking, it's reminding me of a conversation we had with a Theragun founder. And so percussive muscle therapy, and he talks about that he's been laughed out of rooms because people didn't, there was no science to back this when he first started, I believe now like 10 years ago. But his immediate response from his patients was, this is benef- it's beneficial, right? It's working. And so he had this thing where despite the critics, let's call it the scientific community, not really knowing how to embrace him and at the beginning really thinking like this is silly this whole idea is really dumb and then to today where there's published papers there's published science on what he's developed and the benefits of of percussive muscle therapy from your perspective what was that like because i'm sure you dealt with it too where people are even though there are some studies but once you're out in the world and again this is your baby so it is personal and there's a lot of investment what has that been like for you are, are you are you not not so much funding, but working with the scientific community in some way and, and kind of pushing the science and creating science? I just wanted to dig on that and what that's been like. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, that's, you know, of course, has been challenging because, you know, to your point, like Theragun, you come out with a new product, you're the new kid on the block. And, you know, people are saying, you know, molecular hydrogen water, really? Today, though, I have to say there's over, well over a thousand published papers on the efficacy of molecular hydrogen in health and wellness. The Japanese government just approved uh, molecular hydrogen treatment for post cardiac care. They've linked it now to helping 170 different disease models. So there is now substantial research on molecular hydrogen. But, you know, going to people and telling them about it was really an uphill battle. And the other part of the story is I, you know, didn't know anything about the beverage business. Mm. And so how, how do you even go about it? And the only thing that I thought about is, you know, BevNet, which is a group that is, you know, widely supported by the beverage community. They have something called BevNet University. And, you know, at the time pre-COVID, when you could be at places, I would just sit at the back of the room and just learn and take in as much as I could to learn about the beverage industry. And I had no idea when I first started what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes a lot of money to be able to launch a beverage successfully. And, And then, you know, I had the science aspect of it. But I think one of the things that was very helpful for me early on, even when I had those little square pouches, is that I would hand them out to friends and family and just say, here, you know, try this and tell me what you think. And it was amazing how many people came back to me and said, wow, it helped my headache, or maybe they had some other types of inflammation, or if they were an athlete, they felt that they recovered better. So all of these you know, stories uh, were coming back to me so that I knew that I was definitely on the right path. And you spoke to just so many doctors and it's amazing how many medical practices actually purchase H-Factor and they give them out to their patients. And I think most importantly, one of the earliest things that uh, happened was uh, on TV, the LA Lakers were, unbeknownst to me at the time, were buying H-Factor and Steve Kerr was doing an interview on TV and you couldn't ask for better product placement. Right behind him uh, was H-Factor. And wow. so that really you know, helped give us a boost. And then what happened is not just NBA, but NFL and professional golf, tennis, Major League Baseball, they all started to tell their friends and were just started organically going out there. And we really started to get a huge following of professional athletes. I wanted to ask you that. So you have on one side, the medical community as a market, right? So post-recovery, uh, radiation, that side of it, where some of the science in Japan is, let's let's call it more proven or moving along further. Then you have the athletic community. How do you decide? Like how, from a marketing perspective, this has got to be a, uh, a nightmare, right? It's like, because the medical community doesn't necessarily want it to be sexy and beautiful and colorful. They just want it to look kind of plain Jane and make sure it works. Whereas us, let's call it, or like the athletic community or even the hotel groups that you're working with now, 
kind of prefer some edge to the product. And so what was, I mean, that must have been difficult, I can imagine. It's a marketing nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> because your product appeals to so many different sectors. And in fact, you know, my background was e-commerce, you know, before I started H-Factor. So my game plan was not even necessarily to go straight to grocery, but to go ahead into e-commerce. H-Factor has created so many different stories and so many different twists and turns. And um, I was at uh, one of the glossy magazines in New York had a cocktail party and I uh, got onto their it list. So I was invited and I had a chance meeting with the former CEO of Hudson Bay Company. And I sent him a case of water and he got back to me and fell in love with it and then said, I'm going to let you in on something. We're going to be doing a six month pop up shop at mm. our Saks Fifth Avenue store in Manhattan. And we'd like H Factor to be the beverage. And they brought in Peloton. It was everything oh, wow. that was cutting edge at the time. And talk about real estate, you know, location, location, location. We got front and center. And it was such a beautiful space that they created for us. We had a living room, a hydrogen bar. It was beautiful, right? You know, as you walked off the escalator and elevator, we were there. And so how this, you know, took another different turn for H Factor is we got so much publicity from not only nationally, but internationally. So then all of a sudden it propelled us almost immediately into the grocery market. So here I was, you know, thinking, oh, okay, I'll do a slow growth in e-commerce. Now we are everywhere. So it was very exciting. And that was about when we launched in the, so it was summer 2017.